Get ready to elevate your space with Nanalee's latest innovation, the Skylight. Imagine these square panels that radiate ultra-bright light that transitions seamlessly from cool to warm white and offers a palette of 16 million vibrant colors. Sounds like a game changer, doesn't it? These are so unique, but before you rush out and purchase some for every room, there are some things that you need to know. Join me as I dive into my first-hand experience and share what I've learned so far. Let's get into it. The Nanoleaf Skylight connects to your existing ceiling light socket. This is not something that can be plugged into a wall outlet. One panel is wired to the electrical, and then you can add additional panels by wiring them together. The panels are white and roughly one foot by one foot and about two inches thick. When you lift up the diffuser, you can see the LEDs that light the panel. The size is important here so you can plan out your design and measure how many panels you'll need for your space. You can connect up to a staggering 99 additional panels for a total of 100 panels, so you've got options. Nanoleaf has a useful layout assistant that you can find in their app to easily plan your design. Add the number of panels that you want to use and then move them around manually, or use the shuffle option to generate some new ideas. The LEDs are RGB CW, meaning RGB for your colors, and then CW for cool and warm white, so perfect for mimicking light from outside. Each panel is also 1400 lumens. In comparison, most A19 light bulbs are 800 or 1100 lumens. So it won't take many panels to add a ton of light. The Skylight Smarter Kit, as the Analeaf calls it, comes with three panels. You also get a manual with your Apple home code and all the hardware that you need. You can also add additional panels sold individually that come with the panel and of course the necessary hardware. Where can you install these? There are many great places to choose from, but you will need to have wiring, so presumably they'll be replacing an existing light fixture. There were lots of places where I wanted to try these out. I thought these would make a great addition to our basement rec room where the family likes to chill out and watch movies and play video games. It would also go great with the other Nanoleaf products in this room. They look amazing in a bedroom and really help simulate some morning sun to wake up to, though my ceiling fan complicates that slightly. I can also envision adding some panels along this hallway in the future. Whether you're using for functional white light or some fun mood light, you've got lots of options, though they are indoor lights. They're IP20 rated, so fine for dust, but not water. I ended up going for function over fun, and I put these in our main bathroom on our second floor. This is the only room in the house that doesn't have a window, so there's no natural light. We've always wanted to brighten this room up. These skylights are an opportunity to add some bright, natural looking light to this room, so we can at least pretend that there's a window. I ended up doing a basic design, just a straight line with six panels. I won't go through the entire installation because the instructions are easy to follow, and Nanoleaf has their own installation video, which I promise is a lot better than what you'll see from me. Though be prepared to set aside a couple of hours to get this installed. You'll start by turning off the power and then removing your existing light fixture. Next, you'll take the panel from your smarter kit that has the wall bracket. This is a step that I originally missed and it was confusing when I opened up the panel and I couldn't see the wall mount that was referenced in the instructions. To open the panel, just pull out some plastic and then you can use a screwdriver to pop the diffuser off. For just the first panel, you'll need to drill four holes through the plastic on each corner. Then pull the wires through the bracket and attach the bracket to the ceiling. You then need to connect the included cable to the white and black wires from your ceiling. Just two wires so it's pretty simple. Mark your holes with a pencil and then make sure that it's straight and square. This is a critical step for your first panel to ensure that your end design isn't crooked. Nanoleaf includes drywall screws so you can put them right into the drywall with a Phillips screwdriver. They also include plaster anchors if needed. Then you can secure the panels to the ceiling and connect a couple of wires before moving on to the next panel. I'm going in a straight line, but there is room for connecting additional panels on all four sides. Additional panels are even easier. Connect to a couple of terminals and don't forget the communication cable. It may seem like a lot of steps, but the instructions are fantastic, so you really can't go wrong. Just be patient and set aside enough time. I promise it will be worth it. Of course, as with anything involving wiring, if you're not comfortable, then seek the assistance of a professional. Once you have your lights installed and you've turned your power back on, then you can add these to Apple Home, assuming that you're an Apple Home user like me. From the Nanoleaf app, click add a device and then scan your code, then just follow the on-screen instructions. I did initially have some trouble adding these to Apple Home, not an unusual occurrence for HomeKit, but in this case, I did have to reset the panels. Not a big deal, but it does mean removing the diffuser cover from the main panels and then pressing and holding the reset button for five to 10 seconds. Luckily, not something you'll have to do often. Once they're added, you can set the orientation so your scenes play correctly. 
You can then dim the lights, change the color or white temperature, but you can also play around with some fun nano leaf scenes. I won't go through them all, but here are a few. The rhythm scenes, the ones with the music note icon, change to the beat of the music, so you can really have a party with these lights. Think about how you want to control these lights. These work in Apple Home, Amazon Alexa, Google Home, SmartThings, IFTTT, and Razer Chroma. There's also the Nanoleaf app, which we just looked at. But because these are ceiling panels, there's no physical controller like you may be used to with other products like shapes and lines, so it all comes down to how you're using them. Perhaps these are accent lights in your front entrance, then you can just create a schedule to turn them on and then off, but in the bathroom, most of the time, I'm not going to get out my phone or talk to Siri every time I want the lights on, so I've decided to use an EVE motion sensor. This uses thread and also includes an ambient light sensor. I've created an automation that turns the lights to bright white during the day and then warmer dim light in the evening. I've also set the lights to turn off after one hour. In a perfect world, I'd have the lights turn off once someone leaves the room, but I was concerned with motion not being detected if someone was having a shower. So I'd rather just play it safe and keep the lights on a little bit longer than needed. I also created a condition using the controller for HomeKit app so these lights only react to motion if the light is off. That way if the lights are manually dimmed or I have a special scene playing, then they won't go back to 100% when motion is again detected. I also added a scene at nighttime so the lights turn to dim white light so that if you're getting up in the middle of the night to go to the washroom, then you're not blasted by bright white lights. Another option that can work well in this situation is the Akara FP2 presence sensor. Now, I was critical of this in my original review because if you're using it for zone controlling, then I think most people will just end up feeling frustrated. Though used as a single zone presence sensor, it works great. The advantage over a motion sensor is that it can sense when you've left a room almost instantly. Now, it does need to be plugged in, which can really restrict its use, and I know it won't detect someone if they're having a shower, so not a great in this particular situation, but still something to consider. Additionally, I added a flick button to this room that we can use to turn the lights on or off manually, so ideally when someone leaves the bathroom, then they'll just double press to turn the light off, but if they don't, then at least I know it'll stay on only for an hour. This is just a standard flick button, by the way. Flick twist doesn't seem to be compatible with this skylight, at least not yet. So this seems to be a good workaround and so far it's going well, though I do still miss a physical control. Previously the bathroom was connected to a Lutron Caseta switch, and after I installed the skylight, I turned the power on and I could hear this buzzing sound, which I quickly realized was coming from the Caseta switch. It makes sense that a smart dimmer, or any dimmer for that matter, won't work with a product like this. So I sadly uninstalled my Caseta switch and I added this blank switch that I found on Amazon that fits into a decor wall plate, but it's just not connected to anything. This can be a great option for other smart lights that you may have around the house where you don't want people accidentally turning the switch off. I'll leave a link to this blank switch in the description if you're interested. I also replaced the three vanity lights with some Nanoleaf Essentials E19 lights, and that way I can control everything with this motion sensor and flick button. It also gives me the flexibility to only turn on my skylight or only my vanity lights if I choose to, whereas before, everything was connected to a single switch. You could use a standard light switch if you want to and just set the power on state to the type of light that you're looking for. This would still look amazing, but you'll lose any smart functionality if the lights are off. The advantage of keeping a standard light switch is that it's an easy way to restart the device if you feel like it's not responding. Coming soon is the Nanoleaf Scene Plus controller, and this just may be the option that I've been waiting for. This kind of reminds me of a Philips Hue dimmer, but it appears to have more options, and it uses Nanoleaf's learning assistant to help predict the scene that you're looking for. I'm definitely excited to test this out, though the release date hasn't been set, so we could be waiting several more months for that. I have to say though, these panels look pretty amazing. I always find it challenging to film LED lights, but I promise you, this footage is not doing them justice. They're even better in real life. The diffusers do a great job, though if you're paying attention, you can see some hot and cool spots where the LEDs are below the diffuser. This is even more obvious on camera. They look great at 1% and 100%, and the whites look great from 2700 Kelvin up to 6500 Kelvin. And as you would expect from Nanoleaf, the colors are bright and rich. 
Reliability has been decent, though not perfect. I find if I play with too many scenes, then the lights stop responding. Usually this resolves on its own by just waiting a few minutes, though you could remove the diffuser and hit the reset button, or probably even easier, just reset the power breaker. It really hasn't been bad though, and future firmware updates should only improve the reliability. While these panels may not suit every space, when placed in the right environment, they truly shine. Regarding the debate about the pricing, I respectfully disagree with the notion of them being overpriced. Admittedly, they are costly. The Smarter Kit retails for $350 Canadian, with each additional panel costing another $100, totaling $650 for this set of six that I'm using here. However, in my assessment, the investment is justified by the unique quality of the product. Let's face it, good lighting is an investment, whether a standard option or a unique option like this. Although Nanoleaf could potentially offer a similar product at a lower price point, it would likely compromise the exceptional quality that sets these panels apart. If you're thinking of adding some skylights to your home, then check out the affiliate links in the description. The links do help to support the channel at no additional cost to you. And don't forget to leave me a comment once you've installed them and let me know how you like them and tell me, do you also think they're worth the money? Hopefully you found this video helpful to decide if these panels are right for your home. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.